three, two, one. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to this new episode of The Studio Life. I'm Mark. I'm with my new friend, Sonia Waji. We're going to talk studio. And you know what? Here she is. Sonia, <laughs> how Hi are guys. you? Good. How are you? Let me take this sign here from you. <laughs> we get started here on The Studio Life. So, um, you know, one of the things about talking to you, which is so fun, is it seems like you love the studio life. Mm -hmm. You've been around the studio life your whole, almost your whole life now, right? Yeah, whole adult life. Started out as a dancer. <laughs> yep, started out as a dancer, crossed over into event production, and now in stunts. In stunts. Mm -hmm. I love that. I like to think of myself as a capable stunt person. Yeah. And I know this because I fall a lot. Oh, yeah. But you do it for free. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do do it for free. Yeah. One of the things we're not going to do is we're not going to fight on this episode. Okay. I'm a little bit intimidated. <laughs> but it sounds like what you've done is you've taken a whole lot of skills. A little bit of time in the studio dancing. You became a martial artist. Mm -hmm. And it has sort of transformed into a whole new opportunity. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about this story of what, what you know, because all that stuff is done by kids all the time. People mm -hmm. learn martial arts and they learn dancing. Yep. But it funneled you into a new place. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, it was, it, um, everyone's journey is different. That sounds so cliche, but it, it, it honestly is. And I, um, I started off dancing and I actually started dancing late in life. I, I was in high school. I went to a magnet school in, in New Jersey and, um, that's where my dance started. Before that, I was a tomboy, soccer, gymnastics, martial arts. Um, but once I started dancing, that I sort of I I took that off into college, and I uh, majored in performance dance and marketing. And um, right right out of college, graduated and decided I got offered a job as a in a production company, event production. Um, still danced, but what paid the bills was event production and. Um, I got to live both of the, the creative life and the business side. Um, and then, you know, a decade later, it kind of melded together and got me into stunts. Um, dance, um, dance and production both have element, have skills and elements within their, their industries that funnel into stunts. Um, from Dance, you have the choreography aspect of it, which leads into fight choreography. Every fight is choreographed. Um, we know what's going to happen next, where it's like a partner dance almost. And um, production, um, you know, I've with event production, I've dealt with lighting companies, with videographers, um, staging, sound, all that. So I know what everyone is going through behind the camera, and we can all work. It makes it easier to work as a team to get you know the shot and to get the to to get it in a time frame that works within budget too right. you know it's interesting a lot of dancers i know uh i guess there are almost two kinds of dance that i tend to see i tend to see some individuals who t kind of own the stage but mm -hmm. the majority of dance that i see is more ensemble ensemble mm -hmm. it's more you know you move in conjunction with the way the the group moves. So yep. it's, it is a very, not just choreographed, but it's a lot of teamwork. Oh, yeah. And that presentation, that almost seems like an exact requirement in order to transition from dance into the movie business. Yeah, it's wild. It's like an unspoken, the dance piece almost becomes its own living element because if what, everything is timing, but you're moving and you see one person is maybe slightly behind the timing. So everyone sort of like melds into this and knows how to adjust so like minutely that they, that we're, we all get back on time together. And the same thing with, with fight choreo, you never know, you know, what's going to happen. There's always an element of, you know, something that you don't, don't plan on happening, happening. Like you trip over the stool or one of the fighters stubs his toe on the thing. Like, you know, it's just, you never know. And, um, or your, my finger gets caught in someone's hair and you kind of like mold into a, into back on track into that move. So it, it is, it is very much an ensemble and a team in both dance and in the fight world. And even with people who aren't actually dancing, right? You're, you're, you have to be in full, 
sort of timed motion with the director and mm -hmm. the people who are actually looking at that in order to judge whether or not it's working. Oh yeah, because it's all about, I mean, it's all about camera angles. And also the camera could be right here, the camera could be above your head, the camera could be behind you and you are, you have to fight backwards and you, are, and you have to know, you have spatial awareness and you're also working um, with your camera operator and your director because they have to trust and know your movement that you're going to hit your mark at this specific time or I'm, I'm looking at you but the camera's moving this way and I have to know I have to step this direction so that the angle where I'm going to you know throw a chair or punch the sky is going to sell on camera. I, I, I mean it, it's unbelievable the, the skill set here but, but what really fascinates me is the idea that kids actually are learning these crafts mm -hmm. in a sense without ever realizing they're learning these crafts. It's just that dance is so focused on dancing mm -hmm. that all of the other potential avenues for what success in that field could mean yeah. aren't really ever explored at that age. Not that a kid should be doing stunts or anything. Right, I mean, there there's a time and place. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's, it's a body movement is such an incredible thing and I encourage everyone to to explore whether they think they're a dancer or they're a professional dancer to to just to move their body it, it's it's um, you get to know not only yourself but like the space around you and how to how to have fun and be creative and and you know and also it's the discipline the discipline of of dance or showing up on time or the discipline of martial arts and the respect and you know the letting go of the ego and the the stress and the the nerves and and working through that like i think dance and then also performing um really helps train your your mind and your body for sure interesting and you but you just said something that i think is really fascinating and that's the letting go of the ego mm. because most people in an ensemble have to remember that it's not about them yep. it's about some final thing and i think that's sort of almost in a sense the essence of the studio life it's this idea that we're behind the scenes hopefully collaborating, creating synergies that are able to kind of make something better. Yep. Um, and if it, it ever becomes all about me or all about somebody else, mm -hmm. then we actually lose that. It, the idea is the sum of all parts. Right. Uh, it's, uh, it's one that everyone needs to work on <laughs> every day. Um, even myself, because I, I mean, you know, you're either, you're either think you're, you got it and there's there's some people that think they have it and there's they don't need to learn anything else but you really there I'm a forever student I'm always in the in the in the mindset of there's a lot to learn and that that mindset leads to like letting go of this like the ego the big capital E <laughs> that everyone that t kind of like is birthed from insecurities and maybe you don't know something as much as the the person next to you but working as a team you guys can make um can work together to make everybody look good mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of as a stunt person i do a lot of stunt doubling um and you know i don't i don't necessarily care that if i get credit for you know for doing this a certain actress's action or, or for not doing it or she you know it's all for the greater good of like making a really fun piece of work I mm -hmm. mean it's, it's supposed to be fun we're making movies we're making TV shows um, so it's the letting go of the ego is is definitely daily work and it, I think it's all super mentally healthy for everyone to I, I think so I think so <laughs> you know the the greatest uh, choreography I've ever seen in any movie you know was the the car chase scene in in blues in in, uh, in the blues brothers mm. uh because every car had to be perfect <laughs> um but apart from that the greatest choreography i've ever seen in a fight scene was the princess bride the oh. sword battle oh my gosh when they were on the rocks the men and man in black mm -hmm. and things like that so now you started out or you not started out but you have made great inroads for yourself in terms of that type of choreography, the fight scenes and mm -hmm. things like that. I want to talk about, you, you know, that particular scene. And now with the Obi-Wan stuff, and mm -hmm. I'm calling you out on that because my daughter at some point might see this episode and it's <laughs> going to be like, cool. Um, tell me a little bit about the choreography when it comes to putting together a scene like that. Yeah, there was a lot of moving parts. There was a lot of stunt players. Um, we were, you know, we were on for two weeks. Um, 
and you know depending on the size of production there's a core team or that that rehearses every day with the with the lead actors so the stunt doubles rehearse with your actors you work out together everybody gets sort of the same movement vocabulary um, and from then you have from the core team you have your your day players that come in or your week players which is which what I was um, but you everyone again is moving in the same movement vocabulary and and in this world you know we had we were obviously in space mm -hmm. and uh, we have guns that don't necessarily act as guns that how they would react with you're on you know on earth um, so in that world you know you're you have to understand how the mechanics of your weapon um, so with I, I want to say there was we had stormtroopers that again are, are in these amazing costumes but they're you know not easy to move in not easy to see in um, so you have to account for them you know if you're if you're having a, a fight scene or you're having some sort of interaction with them you have to understand okay he might not see me when I'm on this side of him or under here and I also have to shoot him and understand that you know we have to react a certain way and he's shooting and there's lightsabers and all that kind of stuff um, all stuff that's not even there all stuff that's not even there yeah and um, you know act as if you're you're shooting but there's no like recoil because you're in space you're, you're shooting lasers and you know um, it was it was it was really fun. We had a we had a few rehearsals. Um, the core team again rehearsed their specific, the core movements, the main main parts, and we were just plugged in and you know, shoot at these five people and you get hit in the shoulder and then you fall on top of this person and then you're we're all running away and there's people on the ground that you can't step on you know because there's either an actress or someone you know I can step on a stunt guy it's fine yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the act you don't want to step on an actor or an actress. Um, so it's a lot of run-throughs. Mm -hmm. um, everyone gets on the same page. We all have a safety meeting. Um, you know, there's a, a we do it in percentages. So we'll like run a, run a scene. All right, we're gonna do this at fifty percent. So everyone's calm, cool, and collected. Because at three, two, one, a lot of uh, the energy goes up. Three, two, one action. Everyone's nervous and they adrenaline's pumping through your veins, and yeah. everyone goes quicker than they think they will. So you do fifty percent. We'll work up. It's all about how the stunt creator wants to break it down. But fifty. 35 all right we're gonna do this night all right we're gonna go full full blown you know 100 percent and to bring it back same thing with with dance we call it marking we're gonna mark this section at 50 percent so we're all slow we get slow is smooth and smooth is fast so once we get down to the day which is in the industry on the day it could be we're sitting here and we're gonna shoot something we'll say we'll still refer to it as on the day <laughs> so on the day um everyone's confident in where the other players are even if I, I don't I don't have to see them I know where I'm going to trust in my team to be where they are I'm going to trust in myself to be where I'm supposed to mm -hmm. be and you all you know three two one action and it it either works or we got to make an adjustment and you know but when it's a, it's definitely more technical when there's a lot more people yeah I've always loved that expression slow is smooth but and smooth is fast mm -hmm. I love that it's yeah. uh because it's so true mm-hmm is you work it out, you get the technique down, you get the timing, and then everything can just... Mm -hmm. The muscle memory, and then you're like more confident, and then you, you're able to not just do the movement, but add your acting element into it, too. You can't forget about that part of it. So I, it, it's, it's, almost, it's almost something I don't want to talk about. Mm. I've gotten tired of, of, of thinking about it, but it's so relevant in today's world, particularly with, with what happened on, on the Rust mm. set and stuff like that, when we yes. start thinking safety. I mean, you're... You're doing things where you could get hurt at any second. You have mm -hmm. to be 100% aware. You have to know what's going on around you. Yeah. Um, but have you seen and do you anticipate any changes in the business with respect to how safety is treated, how different elements on the set is treated? Um, yes. And I feel I have seen more of um, deliberate um, safety measures and people taking extra care. I mean, I would have... I, I, we all want to, we, safety first. Like we all want to be safe. Everyone wants to get home to their families. Like, you know, we're just making movies and TV here. It's right. fun, it, but you know, at the end of the day, we want to go home unharmed, uninjured. Um, so yes, after that um, terrible incident, I definitely noticed extra precautions, um, more respect being brought to a safety meeting rather than everyone's, you know, we're having a safety meeting and 
people are still, you know, doing their perspective things. Everyone quiets down, everyone listens, everyone's on the same page, everyone checks everything that they're supposed to check. Special effects knows what's going on, the stunt team right. knows what's going on. It's definitely more more deliberate attention made to those safety meetings and to the safety measures that lead up to whatever stunt gag that is going to happen in the next scene or that they're going to shoot. That's right. And so far, Obi-Wan is not using live lightsabers. Correct. So, so far, we're okay there. We're okay. Till they go into li <laughs> till they switch to live ammo, <laughs> we're all right. No live ammo. So, with that in mind, um, you've taken all of these skills and now you're, you know, you're, you're, you're working the stunts, you're working the choreography. You know, what, what's the natural transition for you? Where do you end up taking all of those skills yeah. and keeping, you know, keep working in this business, you know, till you're 90 years old? Yeah. <laughs> Once my body stops working <laughs> and the aches and pains become great. Um, and, and I ask that because so many of us are creative. We're yeah. around creative people with creative vision and creative concepts and things like that. And, and it, we're creative too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe we're a bit player, yeah. you know, here. But the idea that we're not we're not planning on always being bit players. We right. we want to see our vision play out. Correct. You know, what do you think? You know, how do you have a vision that you would like to see play out at some point? Yeah, I think um, my I definitely want to perform as long as possible. It just brings me joy and fills my soul. Um, but there there are and it. Stunts is awesome because you can go so many avenues. There's there's so many um, different levels inside of the stunt world. So you have, we're talking about fights, we have fight choreographers. So mm -hmm. I could be the person that is choreographing the grand fight scene. Um, and I have experience in that as a dance choreographer. Or and, and also, you know, I really love training the actors and actresses and being a part of a core team. Um, because I, I ha again, I was a dance teacher. I have that, that element of teaching and, and, you know, as teaching is the best way to also learn and instill, um, keep the knowledge within yourself as well. Um, and then, you know, I, I see myself going to assistant coordinator, to stunt coordinator, and then, you know, eventually many years down the line, hopefully directing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still like a little baby shrimp, I feel like, in this world. So I have, I want to perform more and just absorb all of that knowledge so that I can be the best stunt coordinator um, that I can be. But, um, you know, the tra trajectory you could do stunt coordinating and then there's second unit directing. And mm -hmm. then you learn all that knowledge and then second unit directing, go ahead and direct your own film, maybe be a producer. Um, so it's just what, um, what, wherever your passion lies, there is a way to get there through stunts. And again, like I said before, like if everyone has their own journey. And yeah. I've known people that have been in my position, and now they're writing, or they're you know right. they are directing, or they're they've become you know a producer, and they're just understand this the element the stunt industry, and they bring that knowledge to make them a better X Y Z. Yeah. Now, one one of the things that struck me when when we talked before uh, before we started taping, mm -hmm. you talked about the idea that you could do a budget. Yeah. You could sit down on Excel. <laughs> yeah. And write that up. Um, I'm a nerd. I love Excel. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The, it's like my home. <laughs> I, I know. It's 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 a it's a good tool. This mm -hmm. Excel thing. It is. Um, the reason why I'm asking about this and and getting your thoughts is I've always believed that the core element to not just really rise up in the business, but to figure out your own paths, especially if you're hiring other people, is to know everything. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be better than everybody, mm -hmm. but the idea that if you're gonna hire camera people, you should know what a camera is, basically how it works, yep. and you should know when something goes wrong, maybe how to fix it, mm -hmm. but also so that you know if your person's the right person for the job. Yep. And when we talked, it sounded like you've basically built a career of learning all of this different stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm interested uh, in, in your perspective there. Does it give you some other options that you mm -hmm. might not have wanted to take otherwise? And like, what yeah, do you think? I think it definitely um, gives me my experience in, in a live event production and, and be working my way from, you know, 
the local production assistant where I like unclog toilets, you know, like I was, you know, the the very bottom of whatever tree that, you know, that you want to refer to. Um, all the way up to executive producer where I had my own event and I was kind of the puppeteer of all of these um, um, of these departments. So ha that journey from, you know, being the small fry to the leader um, has given me so many, um, has taught me so many different languages as far as professional language, like the, the staging guys or the lighting guys or the, the sound guys and, or the, even the transpo guys, like how they're going to get their trucks in is the turning radius enough to get into the venue space. Like, um, you know, it's, it really makes you a better problem solver, I think. And in, and in, in the film industry, um, that knowledge, I think makes you a better problem solver as if you have the right guy or, you know, there's something wrong with the camera, you can lend knowledgeable solutions and be, you know, be an asset to your team versus just having not known that at all and being like, well, you know, you have, you deal with it. I don't, I don't know. Or like giving bad advice, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, so again, I, I always refer to this, like knowing these different languages, because it really is like, I can talk to the staging guys in their, you know, and, and make them confident in me as a leader because I know what they're doing, what they're going through. Like if they run into a problem, I know, okay, that's going to be like probably an hour. So I can shift, you know, you shift everything around. All right, we're going to do this first. And I can, it's like it brings your logistics and your strategizing to be more, most efficient um, with your time and also with your money. Mm -hmm. As well as your tolerance, mm -hmm. you become tolerant of, of, of issues that they may be yeah, having. Yeah, and understanding. I will tell you though, it's brought out a lot of my intolerance also. <laughs> um, I can more easily spot somebody who's not doing their job. Yes. And I can, I can look at that and say, that should take five minutes. Yes. It, it would take me five minutes. And mm -hmm. I'm not as good as you. Mm -hmm. So why are, we, why are we taking an hour yeah. to, to kind of trip over this? And, and that, that ability it make, helps make the hiring process better. Mm -hmm. You're able to ask better questions, able to get to drill down really and understand, yeah. is this the right team right. to pull this off? You get familiar with the characteristics of a, of a good camera guy or of a, of a knowledgeable assistant. You know the right questions to ask and, and um, you know, no one's ever said, I fired that person too soon. You know, no one's ever said that. It's like, okay, right. you want to give people the opportunity, give them the feedback to be better in, in their, in better for the team, better in their job, a better person. Um, but you know, there's only, only so much you could do. And you also, as a leader, you also need to know when's the time to, okay, this might not be the right fit for you. You might not be ready for this. We're going to do some shifting around. That's right. So you think you're going to keep performing at this point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we going to see you around a lot? Yes, I hope so. Um, yeah, I, 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 this is one of my favorite studios. That's I really right. like it. Hey, you know what? Before, before, let's not lose that point because just down there is a stage. Yes. And it's changing, revolutionizing in many cases, in many ways, the way that movies are done. Mm -hmm. And that's now dripping into the way commercials are done. It's, it's changing the way we think about production. So I'm curious as to your take on this volumetric... Unreal Engine type of world. Like, it's so cool. It's so cool. It's it's like a, the perfect mel like melting of like two worlds: the physical art and then the digital art. And it's like it just it, the possibilities are endless. It's what's it like for you to stand in the middle of that stage and have the world change? <laughs> it's all. It's like I stand there in awe. Like, how did I get here? How is this even? I, how is this even like the the knowledge and the and the talent that goes into just building that and then operating it and then having it spit out like an incredible show just you know as as Obi Wan and it it really is I always take a second and I I take a deep breath and I'm like this is I'm so grateful you know for everyone that's involved and also for myself having like having all the opportunities that led me to you know that present moment. Um, 
you do have to take a second. Even if you're there every day, you still take a second. Take a, I, I'm on this lot. I'm not on that stage, and I still take a second. <laughs> yeah. But, but you saw it before. You were in stages that were green. Mm-hmm. And now you're in a stage that almost feels real. I mean, what is yeah. that transition like? Um, I've been stages that are green, stages that are blue. It really, it really helps put you in in the space of of what the actual environment is, rather than having to kind of play pretend in your brain. Like, I see, I'm against the blue screen. Okay, there's a blue thing here, there's a blue thing there. That whole that whole side of that technology is amazing too. But to have the the um, I guess it's like to have both the physical and then you actually see the LED screens and the digital space, it really adds to, it helps your imagination and really get you in the zone of whatever character that, you, that you're that you playing. You know, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. It, it th This runs the risk of being distracting. When you were in a blank stage, you were focused on your choreography. Mm -hmm. Are you finding... And I think you're going to say yes. I, <laughs> is this helping the performance? Yeah. No question? No question. Yeah. Being in a green room is not hurting the performance <laughs> in any way? <laughs> Having the, the physical stage elements and the physical set in conjunction with the, the digital realm is really, it really just, I mean, you don't have to imagine. You're in it, you know? The green does add an element of imagination, as or a mocap even. You know, um, my, you know, my weapon is a pool noodle, and I have to imagine that you know it's this heavy thing. It's it's a whole nother challenge, and that and it's lovely, but um, but definitely this this combination of physical and digital uh, set pieces are next level. Did it take you by surprise? It did. It did. I wasn't ready for it. But now it's like, oh, okay, this is where this is where we're at, and it's yeah. amazing, and I can't imagine, you know, further advancements. Yeah, I mean, if you take a lower budget job, you know, it's going to be a, <laughs> it's like going back to the 1800s. <laughs> Seriously, like, okay, gotta, all right, this is different, but we can make it work. We can make green work. I don't know how. We'll figure this out. Work. We'll make blue work. Well, that's awesome. I want to thank you. Thank you very much for coming by the studio. And thanks so much for having me. Yeah. So. Um, maybe come by again sometime. Yes, we'll talk studio life. Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, that's another little bit. Um, you know, like, subscribe, or don't. Do whatever you want to do. <laughs> um, but anyway, thanks so much. Three.